This third generation Toyota Tundra was redesigned two years ago. Toyota was trying to give another viable option into the full-size truck market. Now they set themselves aside by creating this transformer-like styling, you know, with all of these creases and angles. New for 2024, the Platinum trim can be equipped with the TRD off-road package, just like this one is. With that package, you're going to get this TRD grill. You can see right there. You're also going to get these black fender flares. You get multi-terrain modes, crawl mode, downhill assist. You get these awesome Bilstein off-road shocks that are tucked up inside there. You also get a electronic locking rear differential and the 20 inch black TRD wheels. Those are pretty awesome. I like the red in the middle with on those black rims. Looks pretty sweet. Also, now for 2024, you can add a three inch lift from the factory. So that way you can get your truck like the way you want it right when you pick it up. You don't have to go spend more money to get it to look the way you want. Now Toyota does offer two powertrains. Both are twin turbo V6s, the iForce and the iForce Max. The iForce is gonna provide 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. This Platinum Tundra is equipped with the iForce Max, which is a hybrid engine producing 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. It's tied to a 10-speed automatic transmission with towing up to 12,000 pounds and fuel economy coming in at 19 in the city, 22 in the highway for a 20 mile per gallon average. There are several different cab and bed configurations. Now this one here is equipped with the Crew Max cab and a six and a half foot bed. So it makes for a very long truck and if you want to fit it in your garage, you may have to drop down to the five and a half foot bed. Uh, this is a very long, very big truck. You can see how long the wheelbase is on this. Now we're gonna go around to the back here, take a look at this tailgate. Nothing fancy back here. You do just have the Tundra stamped in there and this did come with the optional chrome lettering. And you do have it saying four by four there. Now they've got, a button to release and it has a soft open there so that's nice this does come with the composite bed in the back which from the factory that is standard on the tundras not a whole lot going on back here you do have some lighting back here there's also lighting up top and then you do have um, plenty of tie down points in here you got a 120 volt household plug right here so that is nice that you do have some power back here, but otherwise it's pretty basic. It does have the notches in the wheel well, so you can put a board across there or use that to section off the bed. But just a few little things they've got back here, nothing major. So the one feature that the Tundra has that no other full-size pickup truck has, you can roll down the full window in the back. That is freaking awesome. I love it. Hey, before we hop in and look at all this cool technology in here, will you guys go down and hit the subscribe button? That way I can get more vehicles just like this Tundra to bring to you and show you guys everything about them. All right, let's get inside. Take a look at the door panel here. Now you do have a couple places for bottles in here, which is nice. Uh, sometimes you only get one then you have a little tray right here that you can probably store some things like joe rady would say you could probably put a couple twinkies in that tray and then you go up to the top here and you just have your window controls and your locks and your mirror controls do have memory seating on this one come around you do have powered seats with multiple lumbar positioning and you do have a thigh extender right here Take a quick pan around and then we will hop inside and get a better look at all of this. 
view of the seat and it does have this nice blue stitching all the way around here the seats are really comfortable they seemed like they were a little hard when we first got into them but um, they really are comfortable i was really surprised because they have such good support there is the door also has blue trim along the side of it there you have your platinum label more blue stitching in the dash this stuff is really nice it's pretty soft i mean it's hard underneath that so it's got like a softer padded covering there uh, your glove box down here uh, is pretty much full so it's not huge and that's just plain plastic um, up here is just a harder plastic but not um, real hard and then you just have this kind of designer platinum uh, bar going across here moving over here you do have this 14 inch infotainment screen and it is really really nice you can see it does have quite a bit of glare on it so that might be something you want to put a anti-glare cover over the top also keep fingerprints off of it you move along here the vents in here i love because they are huge they are very very big vents really good for airflow we do have a dri awesome driver's display. I've been really impressed with it. It's got all the information on there that you would want to know. The other thing that you do change is on this left side over here. So we can go into that and we can switch it to the compass. You have your music listed up there. There's if you have a trailer, got a few functions here. Yep. It's all about your trailers, some your distance and your trip meter there, tire pressures, and that's it. This is where all your driver assistance features are, and this does come with lane keep assist and lane centering, along with plenty of other options to help you park and avoid collisions. And then there's no warning messages. Going over to the center, you have your speedometer and tachometer on the inside of this, which was pretty cool. It took me a little bit to find that and notice it. Across the bottom, you've got your battery, you've got your oil temperature, your odometer, and this is also your trip meter down there. So you can switch to trip A, trip B, when the, your next oil changes do. And then on the right side of the screen over here, you've got your fuel and your temperature gauge there. You do have your boost, so there is your booth for your turbo, and then this is controlling your hybrid battery, which generally runs just when you are stopped, sometimes when you're idling, and under 18 miles per hour, um, it can help drive the vehicle over that, then the engine is the primary source. So just a mild hybrid system. All right, pan back to the steering wheel here, and uh, Pretty basic Toyota steering wheel. I, it kind of throws me off because manufacturers put stuff on different sides. So this one's taken me a little while to get used to the driver assistance features being over here. But here's your lane keep assist. This is your distance for your adaptive cruise. There's your cruise on. This is your resume and set. The mode switches through your stereo and this changes the tracks on your songs. Over here, you've got the volume, uh, your voice recognition, and then these buttons can control the screen on that left side up there, and then you have your phone button. What I like about this steering wheel is it is really a nice soft touch leather. It's very, very comfortable to hold on to. Um, and this center part right here is really thick and bolstered. Um, this is how my wife likes to drive with the lane centering and everything on. She likes to just rest her hand down here, so she does ha still have some control over it. Uh, but one thing that I notice is that this leather here is really, really nice and really soft and just feels good. So this does have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. We're going to go out and look at the main features. So you've got all this brings up with your Android Auto, which is I have connected. This is the normal Toyota interface here. So this is the navigation for Toyota. And then you've got your music, your my phone is connected, and then we're gonna go to here. All you have here is what your what your current information is or your history. 
So right now we're averaging about 17.1 miles per gallon. Uh, this is supposed to average 20, but we um, there had some idling going on and we're idling right now. So some of that has dropped off yet, um, but I have not seen an average of 20 miles per gallon yet. Um, I don't know if we can look here. This one looks like it came close to reaching 20. Through the settings here, we can go into general. And, uh, you got your accessibility, you've got your date and time keyboard and language units, go back out, go down to the display. You can set your display up different ways. Here is your camera, brightness and contrast. Um, we'll go back, settings. Vehicle customization, this is where you can control your lights, your doors, getting in and out of the car, whether you want the seat to slide all the way back, the steering column will, will tilt also because this is a powered steering wheel. Um, and then your automatic climate, you go back to settings, go down through here, and that's pretty much it. You don't have a whole lot of stuff that you can mess with in here. Um, most of it is going to be in your driver's display for all of your driver assistance features. Okay, then you can just hit the button and go right back to your Android Auto. Okay, right below there is your climate control. So this does have heated and ventilated seats for driver and passenger. And then these are just all toggles to turn things up and down. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to use. Uh, you do have an auto setting also. Have a USB plug right here. Down below here, you do have a wireless phone charger. On this side, you've got auto hold and you've got an electronic parking brake. Here, you have a trailer control, you have a camera view. Let's take a look at our camera view. There's our 360 view. You can uh, change the color of your truck to whatever color you are driving. Well, or close, but there are your different views that you have. All right, then you get your traction control, your hazard, and your electronic locking rear differential. Moving on back, we do have two high, four high, and four low. Those are just a pull toggle down. Do have uh, drive modes. You have sport, normal, and eco you do have a tow haul button and also a rock crawl and hill descent so that is pretty nice right here there are two cup holders that are hidden you can keep that closed if you want to so back here you do have this nice little tray right here in the center console um, it does slide back so you can access stuff that in the front of the center console you do have a USB-A and USB-C plug inside here. Now this does open right here too. And look, somebody left us a little Nutella bar. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, this does open also. So when we open this up, now you can see how big this actually is. And it has a small little kit in here. And then I've got safety glasses in this little compartment right here. This slides right there. Uh, my work badge is down underneath here. So this stuff is really nice and it's not all cluttered in here. So they did a really good job with all of this. Now, the one thing that I don't like about this center console is when I am sitting and I'm resting my arm, when I'm driving, my elbow kind of sits more into this center piece right here. So. What I would like to see is this to be padded to just somewhat, even if it was just level with this, but just had a nice little sheet of padding across the top of this and maybe to match this with the stitching. Uh, but yeah, I tend to lean over farther with my elbow and then my elbow kind of starts to hurt sitting on this hard plastic. This does come with the panoramic sunroof. Really nice because it brings in a lot of light into the cabin. So that's everything up front. I am about six foot, so let's go see how I fit back there. It's a pretty good sized truck and it looks like there's quite a bit of room. Shouldn't be a problem. Let's take a look how much room there is back here. 
Door opens really wide, that's really good. Looks like there's a good amount of room in here. Okay, now this seat is set in the easy open. So it is slid all the way back. Um, you can see there is still four inches of space between me and the seat in front of me. And if we put this in my driving position, you're probably gonna have about six to eight inches of space back here. Very, very large in here. Headroom, headroom is not as much, but you still got about an inch. I'm six foot, so anybody probably up to six two to six three is probably going to be okay back here. Why don't you guys come in here with me and I will show you all the cool stuff that's back here. Okay, in the back you can see you do have the same as the front. You do have two cup holders down here and a little compartment off to the side over here. Little shelf right here and nice little handle, window control. Toyota did add the sliding sunshades on the door, so that is really nice. Like seeing that. These windows are a little tinted, but it always helps to have some more. Okay, so here is the space in the back. Um, underneath here, if you don't have the iForce Max, then you would actually have storage underneath here, but this is storing the high voltage hybrid battery underneath there. Okay, well, let's hop in. So as I said earlier, um, the seat was in its all full back position. Um, now it is set in my driver's position with the truck on. So let me show you how much room there is now. How is that for room? I mean, yeah, there we go. Yeah, probably a good five inches. Looks good. Headroom, this is where my headroom is. So you can see it does have this little cutout that kind of slopes. You can see my hands slope back. That is where my head sits. And back there, have about an inch or so. Now, if you were farther up, it would be close to touching my hair right here. So it's nice that they put this little cutout in there. Also back here, you do have heated and ventilated seats back here in this platinum trim. And you have a USB-A and USB-C plugs right there. It's nice that they have little covers on them. All right, you also have a 120 household plug in here in the truck, which is pretty nice. Two cup holders right there for you guys. And then also you do have two more cup holders right there. So that is, this truck will hold a lot of stuff. You got two right here, two in each door. So that's six here in the back, two right here. That makes eight, two underneath that little panel right there. That's 10 and then each door has two more spots in there. So that's 14 cup holders or bottle holders in this vehicle. That's freaking amazing. Way to go Toyota. All right, enough of the inside and the cup holder thing is amazing. Yes, it is. It's pretty cool. I don't know. Are you a cup holder person? Some people are just like crazy about cup holders. <laughs> I'm not crazy about cup holders. My wife is crazy about cup holders. But yeah, there's a lot of them in this truck. All right, I think it's time to go for a drive. Okay, let's talk a little bit about pricing. So the base SR with the standard iForce engine starts at $39,965. Now, if you go to the Platinum like this one, but you get the standard iForce engine, it's gonna start out at $62,105. This one with the iForce Max is going to start out at $69,035. Our tester here with all the options and the destination fee comes in at $75,041. Now, if you think that price is a little high, they do have two other trim levels above this, and that is the TRD Pro and the Capstone. So the Platinum kind of sits about middle of the road for the Tundras. Okay, that's the inside and the outside, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go drive this thing, so let's go. Haven't had a chance to drive this a whole lot. Um, 
I think we've only put maybe 100 miles or so on it, but I really am enjoying the ride of this truck. Going away from the leaf springs in the rear and going to an independent suspension uh, really t helps the ride of this truck. Now, whether they sacrifice some on payload capacity or things like that, which I think the payload capacity is right around uh, 1,900 pounds, something like that. Um, so maybe, maybe they don't sacrifice any of that, but um, I am glad that they did think about giving this a better ride, um, similar to the Ram 1500s that have uh, independent rear suspension uh, versus Chevy and Ford with their um, leaf spring system back there. So right now we are going to go up here. We're gonna hop up and we're gonna go do a zero to 60 real quick. This is supposed to be right around um, six seconds, maybe a little under six seconds possibly, but we're gonna try that out here in just a minute. As soon as there's nobody coming. Okay, we are in sport. We are in four high, ready. A little bit of brake torque. One, two, three, we we'll go. That's 60. Yeah, I would say it's probably in that six second range. What do you guys think of the sound of this truck? Because I think that it sounds really good. You can really hear a nice rumble, even though it is a twin turbo V6. They made a way to give it a little um, raspy or um, poppy noise coming underneath that is a deep throaty sound. So they did a really good job there. I'm really impressed with that. Let's see if I can, I'll accelerate here and we'll hear that real quick. Ready, one, two, three. Yeah, so, I don't know, what do you guys think about that? Tell me down in the comments whether they did a good job making it sound close to a V8, even though it is a twin turbo V6. I actually think it sounds a little bit better than the F-150. So, <laughs> might have left the, some little controversy there, but you can always just let me know down in the comments. Driver assistance on this is really good. You got lane keep assist, you do have lane centering. Um, I, I, I'm not a person that likes to drive the lane centering on. My wife does. Um, it's just not my preference. But if you do like to drive lane centering, Toyota has a very good lane centering system. This, the interior of this truck, I, this is all black. And I think that I would probably like a lighter tone into, in here, um, a little bit better. I think having a, um, some light tones in here would make it feel more open, brighter. Uh, maybe if it's just the headliner, maybe they, maybe you like make a lighter colored headliner, uh, would make it feel really nice in here. I love the infotainment screen here, this 14 inch screen. I like how it's integrated into it with the vents on each side. And again, I'll talk about the vents because the vents are massively huge and I love them. I think they're great. Plenty of airflow coming out of these things. Uh, again, I talk about this center thing. You can actually see my arm is sitting more in the center of this than it is on this armrest. Cause if I sit here, then I feel like I'm crunched. Um, so this needs to be uh, either farther over with a smaller tray in the middle or they need to kind of cushion this center piece right here. The truck is a very long truck. So if you um, need a six and a half foot bed, by all means get a six and a half foot bed. But if you can get away with a five and a half foot bed and but you still want this huge interior cabin, that would be the one that you could get that probably would fit into your garage because this is probably not going to fit all the way into the garage unless you have a deep garage. Um, but I have had a truck with this similar configuration and it wouldn't fit in mine. Like I said, there are plenty of different cab configurations. They have a standard cab, an extended cab, a double cab, a super crew cab, which is what this is. And then you have several different 
uh, bed lengths that you can maneuver with all of that. Everything from an eight foot bed to six and a half to five foot bed. So uh, depending on your configuration, it gives you different options. So we talk about price point earlier and the base model price point is good, is good. Uh, but when you get into these upper trims and then you start adding in the IMAX, iForce Max hybrid engine, which is going to run you about another five or $6,000, um, then you need to start thinking of whether that's worth it or not. Um, personally, I don't see that it's, it's worth um, five or $6,000 more to go to this IMAX or iForce Max engine. Um, I may just call it the IMAX. I don't know why, but I probably will. Anyway, um, because we, we're going around and we're averaging right around 17 to 18 miles per gallon uh, when it's rated at 20. And we have, I have not seen 20 yet. Uh, probably if I restart it and I'm out cruising already and set it up, then maybe that'll have, maybe I'll reach that 20 or maybe 21. Uh, but we have not seen that yet. So uh, I would personally, I would save the money on that engine and just get the smaller engine. The horsepower difference, it, it's there, but unless you need it to tow, then it's negligent. There's no reason for it. Um, especially if you go with a smaller bed, you're probably gonna get similar results anyway. You always sacrifice when you take out miles, when you factor miles per gallon in, that's where you sacrifice power, towing, ability, that type of thing. So you just have to weigh all your options, figure out what the best thing for you is, but you wouldn't be wrong and you wouldn't go wrong getting a Toyota Tundra. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to click subscribe if you want to see more reviews like this. The more subscribers we get, the more vehicles we can get, and the more reviews you can get. So, all right. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you in the next one.